Again. All attendees are muted. Hey, everybody, and welcome to Sufficiency and Gratitude. Just in case you're curious, this is a free webinar in the series on shame, vulnerability, scarcity, and joy. And I'm Cassandra Brown, and happy to be here with you. So a couple of business things. There's a slide up, and it says you can register for your free drawing. We've got eight things that are available for free. And currently, we have seven people on the call. We've got like 17 people registered. Um, well, actually, we've got a couple of extra people. So we've got like 10 people here. So anyway, your chances of winning are huge if you want to go ahead and <laughs> click that link and register. Um, but enough about that. Let's get started talking about sufficiency and gratitude. And oddly enough, if you're here on the computer, you can see that the first slide says scarcity in big letters at the top. Wait a second. I thought we were talking about sufficiency and gratitude. Why are we starting with scarcity? Well, because scarcity is for many of us a constant state of being. We wake up in the morning thinking we didn't get enough sleep. We're not going to be able to get everything done that we want to today. We don't have enough time. We don't have enough money. We run through our day not getting our to-do list checked off. And at the end of the day, we go to sleep wondering what we did. We're like, I didn't check off things on my to-do list, but I was busy all day. And I clearly just don't have enough time or I'm not good enough or I need to be more organized, or if I was better like my friend over there, then I could do these things. Th these are the thoughts of scarcity. And for many of us, some version of that is with us most of the time. And I mentioned in the Shame Resilience webinar last week that scarcity was actually my way into this work, because when I first heard Brene Brown talk about shame, it didn't resonate with me at all. When I heard her talk about scarcity, I went, oh, well, that's totally me. And if scarcity is connected to shame, now you've got me and I'm really curious. So scarcity are the thoughts and feelings associated with never enough, not blank enough. Fill it in. For me, I fill that in with not good enough. But we all have our different things. Not thin enough, not pretty enough, not smart enough, not humble enough, not enough time, not a good enough parent, not a good enough lover. It's like you just start saying that list and feeling smaller and heavier and ugh, that scarcity. Our culture right now, this one that we're in in the United States, certainly, and it's getting exported to other cultures, is that everything from safety and love to money and resources feels restricted or lacking. And it's fueled by media-driven images and stories we tell ourselves about how much better someone else is than we are at whatever that thing is we really want to do. So we compare ourselves to idealized images, and especially when it comes to appearance, this is a very easy one. We look at movie stars who spend tons of time and money trying to look just like that and yet make it look natural. It's just, it's just not true and it's just not a good thing to compare ourselves to because it fuels scarcity. So most of this information was inspired and quoted from Brene Brown in her book, Daring Greatly, which I highly recommend, incredible book. In that, she says the three components of scarcity as she sees them from her interviews are shame, comparison, and disengagement. And those three work together to compound each other and keep doing this not enough culture. Um, in Marshall Rosenberg's book on nonviolent communication, he says that if you want to feel really badly about yourself, just compare yourself to somebody else. And he, he does this fun exercise where he's like, he lists characteristics of Mozart and then says like, and what were you doing by the time you were six? And then lists things about like Olympic gymnasts and says like, how many push-ups can you do? You know, it's like, oh, right. As soon as we start comparing ourselves, we start to feel like we're not enough. There's lack. Um, when there's enough of that, we disengage. We don't want to show up. We don't want to be vulnerable. We don't want to even try. This shows up a lot in schools, in workplaces, but it also shows up in families. And shame is that flavoring that runs through all of it. Um, Brene says, the greatest casualties of a scarcity culture are our willingness to own our vulnerabilities and our ability to engage with the world from a place of worthiness. 
So in a scarcity culture, we are not willing to be vulnerable. If you're going to go into shame, comparison, and disengagement, why would you show up as yourself, as your vulnerable self? And once those things kick in, the ability to see oneself as worthy, just as, just as you are right now, it gets a huge hit. So being able to show up as vulnerable and worthy is almost impossible in a scarcity culture, which is pretty much what we have right now. And the good news is there are ways out of it. And that's what Brene Brown's doing with all of her awesome work. And on a smaller scale at this point, what I'm doing with these classes and these workshops, I'm inviting you to engage in, in the conversation. Today, it's a mostly one-sided conversation where I get to talk a lot. But in the upcoming 12-week series on shame, vulnerability, scarcity, and joy, where we look at relationships, it's very much a multidimensional conversation. Sometimes I'll be teaching in, in kind of a lecture mode like this. Often we will be talking with one another, connecting with one another, doing partner work to the degree that we're willing. So there's only so long I can hang out in images of scarcity before I really want to pull out, but there is a bridge from shame to joy. And this is the image that got me wanting to offer this series to you, this shame, vulnerability, scarcity, and joy. Shame on one side, joy on the other, a bridge between the two made of gratitude, sufficiency, vulnerability, and courage. So let's look a little bit more um, at sufficiency. But first, the thing that I always was trying for was abundance. So sufficiency is this idea of enough, but abundance is better than enough, right? Well, not really. Striving for abundance, um, even if it's in a very, like, visualizing it, doing affirmations, being like, yes, I'm supported by an abundant universe and I receive abundance. There's an edge to it where the desire for abundance gives us this gap between where we are and where we want to be. And so we're still trying to get somewhere else. There's still this not enough thing. There's still scarcity as part of abundance. And that's part of, it's, it's two sides of the same coin. That's why you've got a coin image here. So abundance is the other side of the same coin as scarcity. Wanting more than we could ever imagine, great riches, or the most amazing life ever actually keeps us in scarcity. It keeps us in a gap between where we are now and where we want to be. It keeps us looking outside of ourselves, longing and comparing. So instead of going for abundance, that's why this course is called Sufficiency and Gratitude. We're aiming for sufficiency. But it's not even an aiming for. It's an embracing an experience of and a practice of I am enough. I have enough time to rest when I'm tired. I make enough money to invest in my values. I feel enough safety to open my heart and tell you I love you. I am enough. This is sufficiency. And I am enough for me is made of these kind of components, boundaries, support, honesty, recognizing needs, self-care, inquiry. So we get curious, we set good boundaries, we have support from other people, from ourselves, from spirit, something greater than ourselves, not necessarily religion, but something that supports us beyond the human ability for support. We get really honest. One of the ways of seeing honesty for me is um, you could do this for in actuality. I usually imagine it as looking in a mirror and seeing myself and seeing the honest reflection there and saying, this is who I am. I'm not better. I'm me. So it's better in quotes. So I am not quote unquote better. I am me. For me, that's a powerful short statement to remind me of sufficiency. I don't need to strive to be something other than what I am. Who I am right now is enough. It's enough to simply show up as myself. Let's just breathe into that for a moment. Just maybe you already feel that that's true. 
maybe you've never even considered that idea. I had a therapist about 10 years ago sit with me and say, Cassandra, I was talking about parenting and and my relationship with my husband. And she said, Cassandra, one of the things that I tell my clients is that it's okay to be a good enough parent. I think she said other words there, but my brain got hijacked at that those words, a good enough parent. I had no desire to be a good enough parent. I wanted to be the best parent ever. I wanted to be amazing and in all ways support my daughter so that she would never have any insecurity, any doubt. She would just go through life flying and amazingly, like inspiring everyone, being a gift to everyone she touched. And if I was just this amazing parent, I could somehow make that happen. So when Dawn said to me, you could be a good enough parent. I was like, hell no, I don't want to be a good enough parent. Thankfully, somewhere in that 10 years, most of it fairly recently, actually, I've come to see the absolute brilliance in being enough and at looking at myself in the mirror and saying, this is who I am. This is what my body looks like. This is what I can do and what I can't do. So the honesty goes along with setting boundaries because when we are honest with ourselves, we can show up for and commit to what we're actually going to accomplish instead of promising more and then failing. This is another thing that I have a tendency to do. I want to make people happy. I want to take care of them. I want my participation in their life to make their life richer and more fantastic and more fabulous, or at least easier and nicer. And so I have a tendency to overpromise. And then that fuels my never enough time. Never enough time comes with overpromising and not setting good boundaries. So with being honest and looking at myself in the mirror and saying, I'm not better, I'm me. I can also look at the requests that people make of me and say, is that, do I want to do that? Can I do that? Will I do that? And be honest enough to say yes or say no and have it be clear. Here's a funny short example of that. We at Dancing Rabbit, we're in an eco village. You would think, you know, low tech, right? I'm on my computer more here than I have been since I worked a 40 hour a week corporate job. It's a very computer intensive place. And at this point, I have decided that I'm going to check my email that comes out to everyone at Dancing Rabbit maybe once a week, maybe not that often. It's pretty interesting to say, to set that boundary because we get somewhere between 20 and 40 emails on that list a day. So if I check it once a week, it's like, oh, look, I've got 200 new messages. Hmm. Maybe I don't want to look at it. <laughs> but if somebody wants to connect with me, they can, one, send me a personal email, that's more likely, or two, show up and talk to me. I've just been willing to make that boundary. Sure, there are things I'm missing out on, but there's a lot that I'm not missing out on. There's a lot of I'm not enough, there's not enough time. Oh my gosh, I need to do this thing for that person. That's just floating past and not part of my life right now. So your boundaries that you're going to set will be very individual for you. My boundaries are not your boundaries, but your authentic boundaries will come from this honesty of looking at yourself. Who are you? What do you need? What do you want? What do you want to do? What do you want to offer and what do you want to receive? So I want to go on to a different slide, one that has pictures because, yeah, there we go. This is a fun one. I like, I love mountain climber images. So I'm not going to switch to the words on this page just yet. I'm going to say around setting your boundaries, it's very much about being realistic and it's so fun and it's so hard, but it's really fun. So part of this 12-week class through all of the different relationships we'll look at, because we'll look at parenting and children and business and lovers and uh, friends and self-care, 
through all of those different relationships that we look at, we'll look at boundaries and honesty, showing up being vulnerable, showing up being really real with how we want to be there. Okay, now I'm gonna to switch to the slides. So as we talk about being enough, one of the questions that came to mind for me in this early on in this conversation that I think might be coming up for you, what about goals? What about wanting to do something big and interesting and fantastic? What about wanting to be a great parent who raises a child who's really self-aware and connected to themselves? Well, are you saying that I should just like kick back on my porch and like eat donuts all day and call it good? Like, nope, I'm not saying that. I am enough does not require you to give up your goals. And I actually get really excited by this, what feels very true to me, and, and these are my words. Being enough doesn't require you to give up your goals or dreams. In fact, it's easier to feel your own longing, ask for what you want, and take action to manifest your values when you work from sufficiency rather than lack. There's a lot in that two sentences, so I'm just gonna talk about it a bit more. Being enough doesn't require you to give up your goals or dreams. Saying I am enough, being sufficient in this moment, does not require you to give up your goals or dreams. It doesn't even ask you to. It's simply sitting in this moment, feeling into the spaciousness. What if this moment right here is happening exactly as it's supposed to? So you could think of this kind of universe unfolding as it should kind of energy. Um, my mom had the desiderata hanging up in our house when I was growing up. And that line is one of the things that even in my scarcity mindset, I've come back to as a, as a possibility that I really like. There is no doubt that the universe is unfolding as it should. Oh, well, if that's true, then this moment right now is happening as it should. This the messy papers under my desk that I didn't quite get cleaned up before we started the webinar this morning. They're not wrong, they're just there. It's what's part of this moment. What I say and what I don't say, it's fine, it's enough. This moment is enough. So let's take that moment again and just breathe into it, feeling yourself here, you, as you are right now. You are enough. And from this place of being enough, I'm telling you it's easier to feel your own longing, ask for what you want, and take action to manifest your values, your dreams, your goals when you work from this place of enough rather than lack. And I, I think the energy will come through my voice here. When I'm coming from a place of lack, a place of scarcity, and I'm trying to promote my business, I'm grasping. I'm, please become my client because I really need you to be my client because I really need money. And because if you're my client, then you'll tell me that I'm doing a good work in the world and, and I'll feel better about myself. So please, like, ick. <laughs> I won't say those words that way, but there's part of me that's running that story when I'm coming from lack. Coming from sufficiency is, I love this work. I am loving the process of creating these slides, of creating these webinars, of creating the Facebook page, of learning how to do the ads, of figuring out how to edit my own video. Like I'm learning all of this neat stuff and I'm having fun and enjoying it in the moment. Coming from a place of sufficiency allows me to do that. Coming from sufficiency allows me to take risks. I put up a video on the Year of Joys page, which is just me sitting there talking about a Year of Joys and the workshops. If you haven't watched it yet, please go take a look because I would really like you to see it. But I put this video together and I looked at it afterwards and I went, you know what? I could probably take 20 different takes and edit out little pieces and put it together. But I could also just say, that's enough. Like, it's enough as it is. And so sufficiency allows me to take risks. And instead of procrastinating until I'm quote unquote perfect, I can take imperfect action because it doesn't have to be perfect 
to get you to love me. When I'm coming from lack, that's the hustle that I'm running. I want to make sure I just show you who you want to see so that you love me, so I belong, so that you'll connect with me, so that you'll approve of me. Like when we're coming from lack, that's what we're doing. Sufficiency is I am enough right now. And from that, I have enough to give. I am enough that I can open to receiving what you're giving, whether that's criticism or something hard to hear, or whether that's love and appreciation. I'll tell you what, when you are in lack, it is hard to receive appreciation. How many times has someone said to you, oh, you did such a great job, or you look beautiful today, and you just brush them off, and you're like, yeah, thanks, but you don't let it in. That's part of the scarcity culture. That's part of coming from lack. Sufficiency, I am enough, allows you to let that in. You don't desperately need it, and you let it in deeper. It's like when we're coming from scarcity and lack, we're like the ground during a drought, and we're so thirsty and so wanting to feel the rain and just be soaked and held and nourished, but we're so dry. We're like concrete, and so when when some rain comes along, it's easy for it to just roll off and not even sink in very deeply. Like we get that a little bit on the surface and we're like, oh yeah, that feels good. But then it, it dries up so fast again. We're not spongy. We don't take it in and let it permeate. When we're coming from sufficiency, instead of being like a hard packed concrete plane, a garden and we're lush and we've got different plants and little creatures and we've got grass and we've got ground cover and the soil has a chance to get more fertile and to be spongy and then when some rain happens we know how to hold it and use it when someone says you're amazing can let it in and let it be part of us when someone says i think you should change this and have a different way of doing your free drawings you can let it in and not have it be this oh my gosh, you don't love me because I didn't do my free drawings perfectly. It's just like, oh, thanks for the suggestion. You can tell I just had a moment of thinking about the free drawings there. But <laughs> back to the garden image. Sufficiency, we're much more like a sponge. We let things in, we let ourselves be permeated, but we also have this diverse support system. So like the plants and the little insect critters and little microscopic critters, we're able to metabolize what we're given. We have a diverse range of skills and tools that we don't feel so hit, hit with erosion. Sorry about that. We don't get hit with um, erosion from either approval or criticism. Okay. So along with sufficiency being enough, we do the practice of gratitude. And I mentioned this last time, that more than an attitude, gratitude is a practice. And sitting in this moment, let's just practice a little bit of gratitude. So you sat and took a breath before and felt your sufficiency. So let's come back into that. You can close your eyes if that's something that you're in a safe place to do. Tune into your breath. Feel who you are right now. Say to yourself, I am enough. I am, I am not better. I am me. And then notice the little tickles of gratitude that come in. Gratitude for your body. There's an amazing amount of gratitude to be had just by noticing what a gift it is to have this human life. To be, to be born as a human, to be born as a human who has the safety and access to technology and access to their own inner wisdom and to friends that turn you on to this kind of work, to be able to sit here and practice sufficiency and gratitude that is something to be grateful for.
gratitude's catchy. Once you start doing it, it's really easy for it to keep going. You start to be grateful for yourself, your own body, this chance to be a human being on the planet, and then you can notice there's gratitude for the space you're in. You're in some kind of space right now that's sheltering you from the heat, from the cold, from the wind, from the wet. Huh. That's pretty nice. If you've gone camping or done other, you know, backpack hiking or something like that, where you've been outside for a long time, you can notice the sweetness of coming home and being in your house, your comfortable space. Feeling gratitude for that. If it's not your space that you're in, feeling gratitude that someone else created a space for you or that someone else is welcoming you into their space. Gratitude easily then from being grateful for your own human life filters out to gratitude to your parents. We in our culture have a tendency to not quite demonize our parents, but certainly to um, point out all the ways they didn't do it right, to, to look at the way we were parented through a lens of scarcity. Um, and to some degree, that's been helpful. We've been able to go to therapy and talk about what wasn't perfect about our parenting and what was hard about our childhood. And there is goodness to be looked at in where our needs were not met as children and to be able um, to really get honest about that, take it in and start to heal. But in that, we can really miss the gratitude of, you know, just I'll put it in, in the first person for me. I would not exist as the human being I am without my parents. So whether they did it perfectly, imperfectly, of course it was imperfect, but however well or not I think they did it, the fact that I exist right now and can speak and be on this webinar and creating all these things is because my parents brought me into the world and cared for me so that I could become an adult. However much they messed up for any of us, there is a huge amount of gratitude that can be felt towards our parents. Which brings me into another piece of gratitude and why some of us resist doing it. We resist doing gratitude because we think, well, if I'm grateful, that, that means I can't change anything. Sort of like if I'm sufficient right now, then I can't have goals and dreams. It's no more true that you can't improve or have critical awareness and gratitude at the same time as that you can't have sufficiency and goals and dreams. Like, neither of those connect in any way. Gratitude can absolutely go along with sufficiency. For one thing, honesty, inquiry, it's wonderful to feel the gratitude while noticing what you might like to improve. And in fact, it makes it easier. If you can feel deep gratitude for your parents, it also actually makes it easier to be honest and come with, and here are some things that I'm working on that were hard for me from, from childhood. What was that experience like for you? A desire to understand and to connect can come much more easily from gratitude, whereas when we're when our scarcity and our criticism, we tend to come across as scarce and critical and telling our parents they weren't enough and they didn't do a good enough job and they tend to get defensive. So anyway, I've been using parents um, and that will be one of the lenses we look through in the 12-week class will be the parenting lens. And what was your experience like with your parents? What are you passing on to your children? Speaking gratitude. It's one of the last things down here on this slide because the practice of gratitude comes from saying it out loud. So you can sit in your meditation or you can go for a walk and you can think grateful thoughts towards your parents. It's so much more profound to speak it out loud to them. It also requires vulnerability and courage to do that. And getting support from other people to work through and to be able to feel your gratitude and also to be able to feel the other things that come up. When we get vulnerable, we don't just feel the happy things. We're likely to feel shame, anger, embarrassment, sadness, frustration, 
as well as gratitude, joy, peacefulness, they all tend to come together. We'll talk more about that in this evening. Oh boy, and here we are at me asking you to sign up for the full workshop. Um, sure, we'll, we'll open it up for questions here. I thought there was another slide in between here and there, that's why I'm pausing, but yay. <laughs> I had fun creating this this morning. This is part of the vulnerability and courage and taking action that's like, I don't know, how will it turn out? Part of sufficiency is saying, let's play with it. So I created this saying, let's go ahead and jump in this journey together. People have already signed up for the workshop. It's delightful. So I'll tell you my, my sufficiency and gratitude story related to this exact work right here. When I came up with the idea of doing this workshop, the shame and vulnerability and scarcity and joy, so excited. It was also, it was going to be a full year long course. And it was going to be one course that you're going to sign up for for the entire year. And we were going to look at different relationships. We we're going to look at parenting, both how you've been parented and how you parent your children. We we're going to look at self-care. We we're going to look at your relationship to business and your purpose in the world. And we we're going to look at sexuality, marriage, dating, relationships of that sort. And we were going to take three months to look at each one of those. That was in March of this year that this idea came to me. I remember standing out on the land. I have a morning practice where I will often go out on the land near sunrise and I will stand and feel myself held and open to my own intuition. And this, this idea for a year of joy came through and I got so excited about it and so wanted to do it. And then a little while later, my gremlin voices came in and they're like, how are you going to promote that? How are you going to get to do that? Nobody's going to want to do that. It's too, too whatever, and you're not enough. You know, the thing you want to do is too much, and you're not enough. So it's like, yeah. Thankfully, I've been gathering some um, experience working with those gremlin voices, and so got support from friends. Talked about it um, with different people. One of them that's on the call. Thanks, Danielle. Thanks, Mom. You've been two of my key supports on this, and I'm coming through to this place of wanting to do the Year of Joys in three chunks of workshop. We're starting it on September 25th, which is just next Thursday. I'm so excited to dive into this class. Oh, but that brings me to, yes, there are people registered for it. And when I first came up with the idea of the class, after hanging out with those gremlins for a little while that said, who do you think you are to be trying to do this work in the world? I thought, I'm me to be doing this work in the world. And I want to, and it's valuable, and that's enough. So I'm going to go ahead and do it because failure, the fear of failure, is one of my gremlins' favorite things to pull out. And I said, well, the only way I can fail is if I don't offer this class. The only way I can fail is to not do it. As long as I show up and do it, that's success. And if I get three people registered, I will offer the class because three people to me feels like a class. One is private coaching. Two, it's still semi-private. But three, in my world, it's a class. So it's like, all right, all I need is three people. And a couple of months ago, I had three people that signed up for this. And I went, great. I'm successful. Now the rest of it is just ease. It's just, I actually have a fun acronym for this right now. Uh, because I'm like, it's just gravy. It's just icing on the cake. It's just a bonus. And then I went, oh, that's kind of an acronym, acronym for big. Bonus icing gravy. <laughs> so the rest of this and who else signs up is big. I like it, especially since my other favorite gremlin voice says, if you stay small, you'll be safe. Mm -hmm. So staying small keeps me safe. And I have been working on that one for most of this year. So thank you so much for stepping in to being big with me. And I want to see you in your bigness too. I want to see you in your vulnerability. I want to see you stepping into your joy. I want to see you coming in with your courage and practicing the everyday courage that it takes to show up and be yourself in the world. 
we live in a culture where just that, just the action of showing up as yourself is an act of courage and it's an act that takes practice. Because as soon as you stop practicing, the media messages and maybe the conditioning from your own childhood, maybe people around you, certainly the news says you're not enough, you're in an unsafe world, you need to buy something to be better. You know, it's just scarcity, 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 scarcity. Strive more, strive more, sleep less, sleep less. At least that's the way I hear it is sleep less, sleep less. I think if I could get by on four hours of sleep and be really healthy, then I'd have all that extra time in the world. It's like, that's part of what led me into this deficiency practice too. I was like, mm, no, what if I'm enough? And sleeping is actually part of being enough and that's okay. So coming into, I really want every single one of you that's listening right now to take part in the 12 week workshop. I want you to be a part of it. This journey is going to be transforming for all of your relationships, most especially your relationship with yourself. And you are the person that you hang out with all the time. There is no way around it. There are other people that you can take a break from. You're not one of them. So to transform the relationship with yourself, to take 12 weeks, to come in, to do some We'll do some theory and some lecture. We'll do live hot seat coaching where some people will volunteer. I won't call on anybody and make you get on the hot seat if you don't want to, but people will volunteer to do their coaching live so that you can hear them and you can benefit from somebody else's live work. You'll get to work with great partners or not. I had a couple of questions come in from the Shame Resilience um, webinar last week saying, what if I don't want to work with somebody I don't know? What if I don't want to do this really vulnerable work with somebody new? And my answer to that is you don't have to. You absolutely don't have to do anything. So I think we've had the slide on for long enough by itself. I'm going to bring the little picture on of me so you can see me this morning. Hi, everybody. If you don't want to do the partner work, if you don't want to volunteer for the hot seat coaching, if you don't want to share your story, you don't have to do anything. If you don't want to show up live for the call at all, you don't have to. You can just listen to the recordings. Now that I've re-remembered where the record button is, there will actually be recordings. Um, you can do it at your own pace. You can show up every week, every Thursday at 11 p.m. or 11 a.m. or 6 p.m. I'm hoping to run two classes. You can show up half the time. You can always listen to the recordings. You can do it at your own pace. I want you to be a part of it. And this isn't just like, you know, I've had, I've had personal contact with all of you that are on the call today. And I really want to do this journey with you. So it's a fun and easy thing um, to sign up. I've got it on my website. And I'm going to stick the link over in the, the little chat window because at this point, I don't actually have it. I haven't figured out how to link from the PowerPoint to a website on this any meeting thing. I don't know if it's possible. It may or may not be. So here is the, the link to register for the evening class. So that's a 6 p.m. Central time, which would be 7 p.m. Eastern, 4 p.m. Pacific. And then we've got another one, which is at 11 a.m. And I'll stick that link in too. So my dream is to have 20 people in each class. I won't take more than 20. We'll keep the classes um, at that size or smaller. And right now, there are about seven people signed up for the morning class and nobody is registered for the evening class. So we've got a week to manifest 20 people in each class. Because, yeah, that would be fun for me to make that money. But because, oh my gosh, it'd be really fun to have that conversation mm -hmm. and to have that energy together and put more of this sufficiency and gratitude energy out into the world 
have more of it living within yourself, more of it in your relationships. So that's what we're aiming for. Um, I'm going to go ahead and take a look at the, the free drawing stuff and see if more of us have gone ahead and filled that out. And it doesn't look like most of us have. So I'm really curious about how to do the free drawing today. I think I will ask with the people that are on the call right now, go ahead and contact me afterwards because the whole little Google form thing didn't really work that well this time. Only one person filled it out. Thanks, Vicki. Um, but I would like to get y'all registered for different things that you want to do. So send me an email, fill out the form. I'll do the drawing after the call and I will email out who won some of the fun things. Um, but just for a review of what kind of fun things we're talking about here, we have a free ticket to the thing I've just been talking about, which is the 12 weeks of shame, vulnerability, scarcity, and joy. So that 12 week workshop, it's all online and you can show up as much as you want. You can dive in as deeply as you want. We'll have a private Facebook group for people to connect with each other that are just in the workshop. Um, we'll create community and we'll work with people that also want to see you in your vulnerability and support you with compassion and gentleness and curiosity and see you as enough. One of the ways to see yourself as enough is to be seen that way by others. If you share your story, you share your shame story and the people that are with you say, oh, that's nothing. Hear what happened to me when I was a kid. You know, oh, your mom yelled at you. Well, you know, I was raped. You know, it's like, okay, there's no room. If in, if you hear, um, oh gosh, that's hard, let's have lunch. You know, somebody just changes the subject right away. There's no room there. If you hear, oh, you poor thing, I'm so sorry. Oh my gosh, that's so awful, that's pitiful. There's not much room in that either. So to be heard as yes, how do you feel? You know, to be asked a question to go deeper into it. How do you feel? What thoughts are there for you? What needs weren't met? What needs were met? You know, you, know, you get curiosity, but you also just get someone sitting with you with the capacity to hear you. And that's a gift. And that's part of what we'll be doing. So there's a free ticket. It's worth $297 because that's what I'm charging for the workshop. I'm I just signed up for a training yesterday, and it was, interestingly enough, $297. Mm -hmm. It's six weeks, and the guy that I signed up with is only going to show up twice live, and those are bonuses. I'm going to show up every single week with you. I'm going to be live with you. It's going to be a small group. It's amazing, and it's 12 weeks. I was just like, wow, either I'm really undercharging, or maybe I could just say I'm charging just enough totally sufficient. And what a fantastic offer this is for everybody. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So we also have a life coaching session with Carrie Smith Hardy. She specializes in attachment parenting and relationships, but she is also, um, sorry, she's also open to doing life coaching that is generally open to whatever it is that's going on for you. And there's a VIP coaching session with Goddess Allison. She is about abundance consciousness, which is funny to me because I'm talking about sufficiency and how abundance is kind of the same side of the coin as scarcity. But Goddess Allison is so fun and so enthusiastic <laughs> and so into abundance um, that I'm really delighted to offer this coaching with her as well. There is a website upgrade. Uh, worth $750 from Danae and Todd over at 604website.com. They're the ones that I'm working with to create yearofjoys.com, and they have been delightful to work with. So if you're looking to create a website anyway and you want to invest in it, this is a really nice, um, a really nice thing to get. There's an essential oils consultation, one with Sarah, one with Lisa, 
get a free consultation, get an essential oil sampler. The essential oils are wonderful for mood, for immune system boosting, for healing, for cleaning. Um, I often clean my house with essential oils rather than something, some commercial cleaner. So it gets to smell like peppermint and lavender and tea tree mm -hmm. oil rather than Lysol. <laughs> um, who knows if it's clean, but <laughs> anyway, <laughs> but it feels good to me. So we'll, we'll say that's good. Um, and then there's a shamanic journey with Danielle and Danielle actually happens to be on the call today. I wonder if she has any desire to say anything about it. We'll see. I'm going to open us up to um, question and answer mode and just allow us to go. All attendees are muted and may unmute themselves by pressing star six. So by pressing star six, you can unmute yourself. It's a good time for questions or for feedback. Um, and I'll first offer it to Danielle. If you're still here, would you be willing to say hello and say anything about the shamanic journey, and I'll give you a, a moment while you might be doing this to say the shamanic journey that I did with Danielle in June of 2012 is still something that I'm working with, and it's such a rich experience. And the the way that shamanic, shamanic journeys work, in my experience, is that they're very visual, and they're not necessarily <laughs> linear, logical kinds of experiences. And that makes them absolutely excellent for letting those younger parts of ourselves have communication with us. And many of our shame experiences, many of our intense vulnerabilities that did not feel good happened when we were children. And sometimes it's really hard to access those just by doing words, talk therapy, being in our adult mind. And so doing the shamanic journey with Danielle is one of the ways to come into um, that other more visual, less linear way of relating to yourself that helps you connect with your child self. So, D, I see you're unmuted. Your turn. Thanks. I think you said it perfectly. I just want to reemphasize the point that with a shamanic journey, you get a chance to get into a non-ordinary state of consciousness, which allows you to see your whole life from a different perspective. When we're in the same ordinary state of consciousness, we're often so unaware of the water that we're swimming in that we don't even know how to work on the things that we want to work on. But in a shamanic journey, you're, you're allowed to open up and see things from a non-ordinary state of consciousness and then put some different pieces together or do different work that is easier to do from that different bird's eye view. Thanks. Yeah, thank you. Um, and Danielle is a dear friend and someone that I trust and trust that she will hold wonderful space for you as well. So coming into that kind of vulnerable place of doing a guided journey and connecting with maybe your younger childhood self, you know, most of us have some protection, some protective mechanisms around that because we may have been hurt or shamed as kids. And so we've learned not to go there. Um, and I'll just put a vote in for Danielle as being someone I trust to do that work with and trust for you to do that work with. So um, great. We've got a few more minutes. If anybody's got questions or feedback, you can type things into the chat or you can also just unmute yourself and I would love to hear from you. I'm not going to end this just yet. So you're still welcome to unmute yourself at any point and ask a question. But since we have this time, let's take a moment to again settle into the breath. Feel yourself here. Close your eyes if you can. Breathing in, I am enough. Breathing out, gratitude. So breathing in, you can just say the words to yourself, I am enough, letting that flow in on the breath as though the breath, each molecule of air was actually made of sufficiency, of enough. 
and that air comes in, fills your lungs with enough. And then each little molecule of air gets to travel through your bloodstream and out to every cell of your body, offering enough, being enough, recognizing enough. So the little molecules of air that are bringing in sufficiency, bringing in enough, flowing into your body, becoming you. This air becomes you in each moment. Allowing you to notice that you are enough. Waking up that potential, waking up that energy. Sitting with the scarcity. You don't have to get rid of your ideas of not being enough. You don't have to get rid of your ideas that staying small keeps you safe. You don't have to get rid of your ideas of not being good enough to be loved and accepted. Those are mine. I just told you my deep limiting beliefs that I've been playing with for years now. Whatever yours are, you don't have to get rid of them. The sufficiency, the enough, can come in and sit right beside them. And perhaps offer, like someone with plenty of food, offering delicious soup to someone who's starving. This energy of enough that you're bringing in can sit with, it can even offer nurturance to those parts of you that are starving for connection, for love, for recognition, for belonging. But if those parts say no, if they refuse, if they say, I have no desire to be nourished by you, I don't want what you're offering, that's okay too. Enough doesn't need to go away, and neither do the fears. There's room in this work for both. There's absolutely room for both. The way that I think of it is that they're all held by a compassionate listening energy, by a gentle spaciousness. And that's what this class is going to be for each of us. We're creating a web of compassionate listening a web of sufficiency. Like a trampoline of enough. You can be held on, you can relax on, you can bounce on to get someplace higher. You can play over and over again with different patterns. It's feeling within you right now the fear of failure and the energy of sufficiency both exist. You can just keep breathing in that energy of I am enough, letting it float in with the air and bathe and caress every cell in your body. And then if you like, on the exhale, exhaling gratitude, and say the words, thank you. Or perhaps the word, blessings. Your breath, your exhalation, is carrying gratitude out into the world. Actually making more gratitude with each breath. Offering gratitude, offering thanks and blessings. From your energy of I am enough, and the welcoming of the parts that don't believe it to be true. We are able to be with gratitude and let it in deeply and offer it out to others. Inhaling, I am enough. Exhaling, thank you. I invite you to take this with you as your practice for the week, for the day, for the moment. 
for whenever you need it. And I invite you to sign up for the longer workshop. The thing that didn't make it to this slide today was going to be a little button, which I saved somewhere, that says 30-day money-back guarantee. You can sign up for the workshop. You get to give me your $297. And if any time before October 25th, you decide that it wasn't a good investment, it's not the place for you, it's not where you want to be, let me know. We'll talk about it. I will absolutely refund all 297 of your dollars. I am betting that won't happen because I think this is a phenomenal opportunity. We're going to have small classes, no more than 20 people. In and I so hope you will join me. So I'm going to go ahead and take all of us off of mute and we can just say a word about how we're doing, how you're feeling, maybe three words, three words or a phrase, the energy that's with you right now, and then we'll say goodbye. All attendees are unmuted. All right. Go for it. Get a really uh, appreciating your presence and polish with the way you thought about this. Thank you. Thank you, Cassandra. Enjoying the conversation. I am enough and blessings to you for your work. I'm grateful, Cassandra. Yay. <laughs> Warm enough, healthy enough, and happy enough. Yay. <laughs> I'm excited, and I feel very blessed by this time with everyone. There's room for a little bit more. I don't think everybody said something. How are you doing? Let your voice be heard. Going to circle up. Mm -hmm. All right. Blessings to all of you. Thank you so much for coming. Thank you for giving me the opportunity to share this with you. That is an amazing blessing for me, and I really appreciate it. Blessings on your day, your life, your week, and hope to see you next week. Ah, Tosca says her mic isn't working, but she's grateful and excited. Thanks, Tosca. <laughs>